a few days ago, 99 years ago, to give you guys a sense of what it would have been like to have been here at the funeral of Jeremiah O'Donovan Rossa and to have heard the words of Patrick Pierce that day. So ladies and gentlemen, your attention please. It has seemed right before we turn away from this place in which we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Russa, that one among us should, in the name of all, speak the praise of that valiant man and endeavour to formulate... They think they have pacified Ireland. They think they have purchased half of us and intimidated the other half. They think they have foreseen everything. Think that they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland unfree shall never be at peace. Our hookers, Yermody Gulliman Rossa. Shahin Kid, Charmless Dots, the Imakti, Erna, Fihisa Shajig, and Clara Kumraha Kid Lian. We are gathered here today in Glasnevin Cemetery to commemorate the centenary of the funeral of Jeremiah O'Donovan Rossa. This is the first of the state ceremonial events taking place during the Ireland 2016 centenary program. The Father of Galair. A quailum fodse fuila, a carib or neutron, Mihal Dio Higgin, Agus Sivin Egan. You're all very welcome to today's ceremony, but I would like to pay a special tribute and welcome to our president, Michael D. Higgins and Sabina Higgins. Gael, Ira Aramsa Lauer to you, our son of Will Crinehe, our own lawyer Shah, because our son of Will Bio the Clan of Gael, like Mulla on Laban, Lagamari Grey on Shah, because a Greece of Manma, Nagara de Tog of Ronak in a year. It would seem right before we turn away from this place, where we have laid the mortal remains of O'Donovan Rossa, that one amongst us should, in the name of all, speak the praises of this valiant man and endeavor to formulate the thoughts and the hopes that are in us as we stand around his grave. If there is anything that makes it fitting that I, rather than some other, I, rather than one of the grey-haired men who were young with him and who shared in his labours and in his sufferings should speak. It is, perhaps, that I may be taken as speaking on behalf of a new generation who've been rebaptized in the Fenian faith and who've accepted the responsibility of carrying out the Fenian program. I propose to you then that here, by the grave of this unrepentant Fenian, we renew our baptismal vows 
Here, by the grave of this unconquered and unconquerable man, we ask God, each one for himself, such unshakable purpose, such high and gallant courage, such unbreakable strength of spirit as belonged to O'Donovan Russell. Deliberately here we avow ourselves, as he avowed himself in the dock, Irishmen of one allegiance only. We of the Irish volunteers and you others who are associated with us in today's task and duty are bound together and must henceforth stand together in brotherly union for the achievement of the freedom of Ireland. And we know only one definition of that freedom. It is Tone's definition. It is Mitchell's definition. It is Ross's definition. Let no man blaspheme the cause served by the dead generations of Ireland by giving it any other name and definition than their name and their definition. We stand at Ross's grave today not in sadness, but rather in exaltation of spirit that it has been given to us. And we come thus into so close a communion with this brave and splendid gale. Splendid and holy causes are served by men who are themselves splendid and holy. But Donovan Ross was splendid in the proud manhood of him. Splendid in the heroic grace of him. Splendid in the Gaelic strength and truth and clarity of him. And all that splendor and pride and strength was compatible with the humility and a simplicity of devotion to Ireland, to all that was olden and beautiful and Gaelic in Ireland. A holiness and a simplicity of patriotism of an Ono Grownie or a Michael O'Cleary. The clear, true eyes of this man, who, almost alone in his day, visioned Ireland, as we today would surely have her. Not free merely, but Gaelic as well. Not Gaelic merely, but free as well. And so in closer spiritual communion with him today than ever before, or perhaps ever again, and in close spiritual communion with those of his day, living and dead, who suffered with him in English prisons, and in a communion of spirit with our own dear comrades who suffer in English prisons today, and speaking on their behalf as well as our own. We here dedicate to Ireland our love and to English rule in Ireland our hate. This is a place of peace, a place sacred to the dead, where men should speak with all charity and all restraint. But I hold it to be a Christian thing, as O'Donovan Rossa held it, to hate evil, to hate untruth, and to hate oppression. And by hating them, to strive to overcome them. Our foes are wise and wary and strong. But wise, wary and strong as they are, they cannot undo the miracles of God who ripens in the hearts of young men, the seed sown by the young men of former generations, just as the seed sown by the men of 65 and 67 are coming to their miraculous ripenings today. Rulers and defenders of realms must needs be wary if they're to guard against these processes. For from death springs life. And from the graves of patriot men and women spring living nations. The defenders of this realm have worked well, in secret and in the open. They think that they have pacified Ireland. They think that they have intimidated half of us and purchased the other half. They think that they have foreseen everything. They think that they have provided against everything. But the fools, the fools, the fools, they have left us our Fenian dead. And while Ireland holds these graves, Ireland, unfree, shall never be at peace.